and gentlemen, welcome back to the second session of the day, 2019 Geneva Forum on the topic of China's high-tech repression and freedom of religion. The session that we are about to start is the witness account session. This is one of the sessions which we have added um, or incorporated in the Geneva Forum specifically to ensure that the victims of the China's repressive policies can come and give their personal account and to tell you how they were personally affected by these suppression and the oppression and also to let you know that when we talk in vague terms of human rights violations that are happening in Tibet, in East Turkestan, in Southern Mongolia, to let you know that these people, these numbers that we quote, are also human beings, are also people who feel, who have emotions, and to whom you can relate and understand the kind of psychological pressure, the kind of physical torture that they go through. So to this year's witness account, we have Pinzog Nijon, the longest serving female former political prisoner. I would request interpreter Kande Tsumula to please escort Pinzog Nijonla to the desk, or to the dais, please. A brief biography of Punjong Ejunla. She was born in Pembo, east of Lhasa, in 1970. And she is one of Tibet's longest held female former political prisoners. At the age of 17, she joined Nyuchung Ri Nanari on 14 October 1989. She was first arrested for taking part in a peaceful pro-independence demo demonstration in Lhasa. She was sentenced to nine-year imprisonment on charges of counter-revolutionary propaganda and incitement against the masses, and for being a ringleader of the demonstration. While in prison in 1993, Pinzok, along with 13 other nuns, recorded songs of freedom in Drapchi prison, which led to the further extension of her imprisonment sentence by another eight years, making her total prison term of 17 years. Due to international outcry and advocacy, Punzok was released from prison in 2004 and later granted permission to leave for the United States for medical treatment for three months and then moved to Switzerland where she was granted political asylum. She was awarded the prestigious Reebok Human Rights Award in 1995. The award honors people around the world who have made a significant contribution to the cause of human rights against great odds. The June 4th Anniversary Committee and the China Peace also honored her for her courageous sacrifice in the field of human rights. When people ask us, what is the point of holding international outcry? What is the point of going on the streets and asking the world to recognize the human rights and press China to respect and guarantee the human rights of Tibetans, I think she is an example. Because of the people who went on the streets, because of the international community standing up and asking for justice and asking for the release, she is here. Please welcome to the witness account. Please welcome her to share her feelings, to share her account of her experience. Thank you. And just just today, I'm telling you, since you know, 
and thank you very much, Tibet Bureau Geneva, for giving me this opportunity to share uh, physical and kind of mental torture that I was subjected to undergo in this very important uh, forum. Nemelpinzonidisu, <laughs> Uh, my name is Punzok Nyutin. I was born uh, to a Pembo Yarong family, a daughter of uh, Tashi Wangbo and uh, Belgi. Um, I did not get an opportunity to go to school uh, because I belong to a family. Uh, the Chinese official labeled my family as a reactionary classes. So the Chinese government bars children belonging to so-called reactionary classes from attending school. And Kushokonazo <laughs> So in 1987, uh, there was a large demonstration across the uh, Tibet, and that was the first demonstration uh, led by Tibetans who were born after Chinese occupation of Tibet in 1987. And in 1988, during uh, Lhasa Malam uh, Festival, uh, the Great Tibetan Prayer of Prayer Festival, I, along with Ngawang Chetan and some more monks who are, who's, who are still in Tibet, uh, joined uh, the protest led by Sera Tepung and Ganten Monasteries. So we walked to the street and protest against the Chinese government. And uh, during that time, the Chinese police, they, uh, uh, they hit the demonstrator is indiscriminately, and protester was stoned, uh, fired tear gas. Dozens of protesters were shot dead during that time. So a monk near to me, a monk near to me um, was, I mean, they stoned everywhere, so the gunshot coming from all sides. And I saw a monk was uh, injured severely, so uh, I went with Ngawang Chotun to Menzi Kang, that's the Tibetan Medical Institute, to get a medicine and uh, to help him. So we were able to get inside Medical uh, Institute, Menzi Kang, to get medicines. But while coming out, we were stopped. We couldn't go, come out of uh, Menzi Kang. So, uh, and <laughs> Mummy Yung to Ten Loro Chi 
in early 1989, one late night, I, along with uh, Tenzin Wang Mu and five other nuns, uh, we walked, uh, we secretly ran away from our uh, quarters in Nanuri and we walked to Lhasa. And we reached Lhasa Pako, Lhasa Square, Main Square, early in the morning. So as soon as we reached Lhasa Pako, we started distributing flyers um, calling for Tibet's independence and long life His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and then marched around Lhasa Square. Since it was very early in the morning, um, there were only few elderly Tibetan women uh, in the area. So we started protests and shout, uh, shouted slogans calling for long life His Holiness Dalai Lama and independence for Tibet. And some elderly women, uh, they thanked us and insist, insist and request us to leave the area immediately, and they informed us that uh, Chinese authorities are coming towards us, but we did not listen. We continued our protest. So one elderly woman forcefully uh, took me to one corner of uh, Lhasa Pako, and the other nuns were also taken forcefully uh, taken away by other elderly women. That's how we were separated. But fortunately, on that day, the Chinese police uh, could not arrest any of us. Mm -hmm. Gujuke, <laughs> So in October 1989, I, um, along with Tinzi Wangmo and some other nun, uh, we also uh, started protests. And uh, that time, we were able to raise only two slogans, uh, calling for Tibet's independence and His Holiness Dalai Lama, because during that time, Tibet was completely under martial law. So we did not get a chance to raise further slogans. So soon after raising these two um, slogans, uh, we were taken away. あの、ご存知でれでれ、アンコンズチラチアチドダンズアニガンガソソカンバソジェレレチテチスカンガナ。アンアラレナチラチニゲミニダペオニケソ。アネコンズタチラチズネガタトンデタヤゲラチャンネ
I responded to them that uh, it is uh, me, I only invited them to join the protest. Being a Champa eater, that's a Tibetan Bali eater, it's our responsibility, and I took the responsibility in staging the protest. So no, no one is behind uh, protest, and it's also um, completely under my responsibility for this uh, uh, protest. And then also I informed that um, I went to Lhasa the day before, and I have noticed that His Holiness the Dalai Lama has been awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. And so soon after learning this, and um, I have told them to, uh, because it's not possible in the monastery to celebrate the uh, conferments, to celebrate the Nobel Peace Prize of His Holiness. So instead that, so we started protest. So that I have called them to uh, protest. So I took the responsibility for staging the protest. Angalia <laughs> And if I talk a little bit about how, how I was tortured, and my hand, uh, they handcuffed me, and my, uh, my right hand uh, was forced backward over my right shoulder with my left, uh, with my left hand, and then they pulled back under my left armpit and handcuff. When my arms did not reach, um, did not uh, stretch enough uh, for the handcuff, uh, they um, handcuff. Uh, then my uh, so my arms did not stretch far enough for the handcuff, and so my hand was dislocated. Then one of the guards they uh, stood on the table and yanked me from the handcuff. So when the handcuff was removed, my my right hand was just grim, like hanging like sleeves. Then they, then they brought cobbler's machine uh, used for shoe uh, sewing, sewing, and then Chinese girl forced my fingers into the machine and ramping my uh, ramping the sewing needle, uh, needles right through all my fingers one by one. Uh, one by one into all my fingers. And then the Chinese uh, prison guards, he put the secret birds, um, secret birds were stuck on my mouth and saying that the problem is your mouth. And so they put all, used, uh, stuck the secret birds on my mouth. Uh, then they torture me with electro electronic button, and I so they put the uh, wire electric uh, give the el uh, electric shock, and during that time I felt like all my organs were coming out, uh, coming out and become uh, unconscious. So I f uh, when they uh, when I became unconscious, they splash water on my face to regain um, the consciousness, and again they use the electric um, give the electric shock. And <laughs> And then they hit me all parts of body with that with iron button. Then you that to spend in Gang Horatan, Yeda Tenegel Titan, then not to get Yeda to get Tambek of Langer, 
they tortured me very severely, and I, I cried actually, but tears, but tears, I did not have tears. And then they again, um, they put, I was subjected for further uh, torture and saying that, see how. Uh, how cruel you are, your heart is bigger than your uh, body. And then I was again subjected to further torture, saying that you are not crying, so no tears are coming out. I was tortured whole day without having a drop of water uh, on that day. And uh, at last, in, at the la late night, I was moved to a small cell and house with only a thin mattress. And I, I, w I d desperately need a rest during that time, but I was unable to sit and, um, because my whole body was covered with black and blue bruises. So if I lean against the wall and it, the pain emanating from the uh, bruises, uh, were such unbearable that I could not see it. If, if I put my place, my fingers, of hands on the floor, and all my f uh, hands were suffering, uh, were had a bad uh, because of the electric shock. So I was unable to see it uh, that day. And then, when the last degree my mother came in, she said, "Don't go to the, I need to do that." After a few days, I was, uh, I was transferred to Lhasa Intermediate uh, Prison and sentenced to nine years imprisonment. And, and also, Pinzo Panmo, uh, she also said that she led the protest. So she was also sentenced for eight years, and other uh, nuns were sentenced uh, for three years. And then we were transferred to Dabchi Prison. <laughs> ane uh, so the situation in Dabchi uh, prison was like hell on earth. So we, we were subjected to a series of torture. And in 1992, uh, March 5th, 6th, and 7th, the dates uh, coincide. Uh, with, uh, so that was the Tibetan Lhasa day. 
uh, Tibet New Year. The dates uh, coincide with the uh, demonstration in 1988, March 5th, 6th, and 7th. So in order to commemorate those dates, um, we removed prison clothes and wear our own casual clothes uh, to, uh, to commemorate the day. And uh, <clears throat> then my co-prisoner, Chungta, who is also here in the, fo in the hall, and Tawa Doma were the eldest among the nuns uh, in Dabshi prison. So they were ta forcefully taken away to other detention centers because the Chinese police or authorities, they thought that if they took the uh, eldest uh, nun among us, then we, the younger one will stay quiet and will not stage any protests. And then, but then we started protest uh, when they were forcefully taken away from the uh, prison. So we started protest and called the Chinese authorities to take us also along with them. And so regardless, the prison authorities took uh, Chungdak and uh, Dawadoma, and there were at least six to seven uh, Chinese police guard for each nun and beating civilly. So we were like swept with six to seven uh, Chinese police. Uh, so beating us civilly and leaving us nearly dead. So um, if I look back to that day, I strongly feel that the that the non-political prisoner Tibetans who were in detention uh, number two uh, really saved us. Uh, really saved us because when the Chinese police beat us civilly and we were shouting, and then the uh, then the non-political prisoners in detention center two, uh, they powerfully shouted for help, uh, save the life, and all. They and they and they also said they were killing our people. So this. Um, so this forced the Chinese police uh, to leave our cell and rush towards there. And this action, I believe, has saved us and gave us a second chance of our life. I may be overstating if I say all nuns during that, day, during that time would have killed, uh, but I can say for sure that at least, some, at least uh, three or four nuns would have been killed if they did not shout for help. And then go to Gosum Layang and the Anichu Shed, Shed Dredge Chevy, Shed the Gundulia to Luda, Anni Umperanze, and Songana Gennedan Gollet. They can attend it over Hakoja Layang and Zulia, Lo Mane, Gubarak, Anni Tabu Chevy, and Aralan to do Lodge, Canon Chev, Machandong, a lojudin, that in the lojudin Chev Tinjet. Then in 1993, and uh, we a group of 14 nuns in Dabchi prison, we secretly uh, recorded a Tibetan songs uh, dedicated to His Holiness the Dalai Lama and, and the independence for Tibet and the situation in Chinese prison. So uh, upon, up, upon learning uh, these songs, the Chinese officials uh, further interrogated us multiple times. And then following this, um, the prison sentence of Dabchi nuns, we were further, uh, our imprison, imprisonment was in Greece. And I was sentenced to another eight years with a total of 17 years prison sentence. Mummy Nyagana Yunjo Chatam, the power of the Chatam, Chilo Dunjal, and the Sajango Gotsui. Nimusum Tali, the Kundu Yiji Chigimindo, Mandal Tondo Chukonje, she's like her answer, Karishan Sajango Chigusa, and Manzo wants to temper the Timbers at Shia, Shia, some Mindusia, and Dilan Aranzo, the Shin Shikurish, and the Sajango which is Shia, yes, the Chima. She's the Karans Kenyan, Chizog and Kenyan, Logjuva. She's Karans, she's not rotting on the Kenyan or Yuksha, what in this. And in 1996, uh, we were forced to undergo a rigorous uh, military-style training. So women prisoners had to undergo the training as men go, and there was no exception for women. So we had to compete with men prisoners and all. So even though uh, we carefully folded our beds and keep ourselves clean, the prison guard always found something, some fault on us and subjected, to us, uh, subjected us uh, to endless torture, often beating us. So 
So we all arrived at the consensus that our deaths are certain. So we reached and we decided to go on a hunger strike. Um, hunger strike. So we stayed, uh, staged a hunger strike protest. For the next four days, uh, we did not uh, even drink a drop of water, and uh, some of nuns were becoming so weak. And on the third day of our hunger strike, the prison staff, they called us for a meeting, and they did not believe that we were actually on the hunger strike. And then they asked, um, they, they asked the reason why we are staging hunger, uh, hunger first or hunger strike. And then we said that we, so instead of dying uh, from endless tortures at the hand of prison guards, we would choose to die by our own conditions. We would choose to die by ourselves. And, oh, and to our great dismay, uh, they did not believe that we were actually on hunger strike. And then um, they said, uh, they mocked us, our efforts, and saying that you all are welcome to kill yourself and you can die as your wish. Uh, your, your lives are worthless. And then you miss it and you judge the Tan on those so we go to the Tatic Mika or Tandeva Misha Jigi, the Kanegeja Shia Tugmundo, and one near Jigan, a young Hor Tugmundra, and she never comes to years in the Kondongan to Tondo Kongs, and one of the Lama to the Chapter Tomba Mayim, the Tomba letter, Mini Nigan on the Rikio, Jujela Mat, Nidigan, the Mapa, Josopa, and Unconsecur, and Jerti, the Unconsecine, and the Takaranzo, Sajang with some Shia. Ganzu on our fourth day of hunger strike, and um, on hunger strike, we began so uh, weak that we were unable to stand on our own feet, and we were not able to get out from our beds. So uh, some of uh, my fellow nuns were on the verge of death. So after witnessing our dire conditions and the health condition, the prison authorities, they realized that we were serious on hunger strike. We are really on hunger strike. So they urged us to eat, and they promised us uh, that they will stop beating us. However, they feel, uh, failed, and they did not keep uh, kept their words. They keep us beating as usual. And when the prison doctor see us, and he was uh, shocked and deeply disturbed to see our conditions, and saying that um, we won't be able to regain our health now. And and he also advised the prison authorities to give uh, to do not give food or large amount of food for us and serve a very small amount of food because it will, our body is not in a condition to digest all those. So, <clears throat> so the, the, the um, prison doctor advised uh, the prison authorities to just give a small amount of uh, zampa and barley with, uh, with water and give as a medicine a very small amount to digest. So for four days, uh, just leave alone food, we did not have a drop of water. And <laughs> Then on 1st May 1998, um, the, in front of a uh, women's prison, there is a big square. So during that day, all the non-political uh, prisoners, Tibetan prisoners, were 
uh, taken to uh, for the flag hosting, and we were not uh, taken out. So all the non-political Tibetan prisoners were gathered during the flag hosting. So, however, on that day, uh, from a non-political uh, Tibetan prisoners, a loud cry calling for Tibetan independence, and then calling <clears throat> that Chinese are not allowed. Chinese cannot. <clears throat> host a Chinese flag on Tibetan land, and so such a huge ho loud cry came out. And then the Chinese police started gunfire, and so I, during that time, the feeling, um, my feeling was that the, the whole square would have covered with, with full blood. Mugugebechain, <laughs> Again, on uh, 4th November, uh, the Chinese police, they raised a flag. And during that time, we uh, protest inside the prison. But our voice were not coming. We were completely, uh, so the, our protest, our slogans were not going out. So what we did was we clamped on the prison uh, window. And um, so we broke the window uh, to, in, order to, um, and in order to make sure our voice and our protest slogans are heard by the Chinese police. So we uh, protest, and immediately the police and the prison guard, they storm up, uh, storm into our prison cell, and we, they brutally beat us uh, with belts and kicked us mercilessly, and then they dragged us. And then my mother was like, "Just carry you out." Logu yor, chapsi yor. Then my mother was like, "Just get out of here. Just drive around. Just carry the car. 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 Just So they beat us with whatever they get in hand. They have bell, they have stick, and whatever they get in hand, and beat us all parts of body. And so they beat us so severe that even um, so, our prisoner uh, nuns uh, become uh, so fully covered with the blood and bleed, bleeding uh, from heads and face and all parts of bodies, and our face will become uh, unrecognizable. And <laughs> Ningun <laughs> Then, um, since then, for 12, 12 of us were put in a small cell, and only one bucket uh, chamber pot was given to share among all of us. So, and, um, so for me, uh, it's not just the physical torture that I was subjected to. The more problem that I faced was uh, because it, for restraining oneself uh, from toileting. So because we had only one small pot to share among 12 nuns, and this will be filled by the morning or by before the noon. So it's not possible uh, to use that uh, bucket chamber pot. So that was the one of the most uh, painful moment uh, I had to undergo in prison. And then for three and four months, uh, we do not have a drop of water to wash our face, to clean ourselves. And so being a woman, actually, we, by biological um, need, we need a special, uh, actually, uh, special 
uh, care or special things to keep ourselves clean, but that consideration was not there. And uh, so the room, the small cell would stink very bad, it stink very bad that even the prison girls, they hesitated to come inside. And Jana Shungi, the Zundin Nalia, Harako or Sana, and the Zombalia, Tawajil, took their chicks in Chechoku Yusquir, in Elangara Tiga lay and the Kangara Tao Tool has a ticket to their Gangoches. According to Chinese prison law, what uh, they say is that family members of prisoners can meet uh, the prisoner once in a month. However, my family's uh, member, were, however, my family members were denied visitation rights for me around six months. And and <clears throat> so as a part of forced labor, uh, we were forced to need sweaters. So each day we had to uh, fulfill the mandatory quota, uh, quota of needing one sweaters, uh, that's equivalent to four grams of very thin yarn, and two sang for heavier yarn. So uh, if we fail to meet that quota, the family visitation will be denied. So for me, meeting a friend, meeting my parents, is not whether just seeing their face gives me an immense pleasure and happiness. So that's very important and I sincerely, uh, and uh, all the day I uh, need the sweaters just to meet my parents because I do not want to uh, miss that visitation opportunity. But uh, so during summertime it was okay, but in the cold uh, dark winter then we sat on a hard wooden uh, stool the whole day. So the winter's time, it's worse uh, time. So when our hands were, would become a sore from constant weaving, and we were punished uh, with beating a use, if we use a small piece of cloth uh, as a cushion to sit on a stool. But the constant pressure, so we cannot use that piece of cloth uh, to keep ourselves um, warm. So the constant pressure from sitting on the hard stool uh, gave me a bad stool around my hip. So I still have a problem sitting on stools due to the injuries sustained, uh, during, uh, sustained while in prison. <coughs> Um, so I lived under such a miserable condition every day in my imprisonment from 1989 to 2004 until I was freed, so for 15 years. And because of uh, the grace of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and all the international community, um, I was released two years before my imprisonment. So I was uh, put in prison for 15 years and two, but then um, I was not actually freed. I was put under house arrest. So as I said before, uh, because of the grace of His Holiness Dalai Lama and international community and the all human rights uh, groups, I was allowed to travel to the uh, United States for medical treatment. 
So Switzerland has granted me a political asylum, so I'm currently living in Switzerland. So what I had just shared was just a part of uh, the kind of physical and mental torture that I was subjected to undergo in, in the, in, in, for 15 years. And um, so if uh, it's not possible for me to share each and every incident and each and every experiences that I had to undergo, and it would need, I would need a days and days to share all the stories. So what I shared um, problem was uh, the experience and the torture that I had to undergo is I shared it uh, just uh, to, um, not just to say I had to go all those things, but because just to tell you that the situation inside Tibet, just to reflect a part of the situation inside Tibet, and the situation inside Tibet is not getting better, instead going worse. So this is just a part of, so through my personal experiences, I intend and I try to uh, tell what's really happened in Tibet and what is really happening inside Tibet. Ngarin so I uh, feel that I was the most fortunate among all the pr political prisoners because I was able to come out of Tibet and I got the medical attention and I am free now. Uh, but uh, all the political prisoners and also not only the political prisoners, also the former political prisoners, uh, they, uh, ha they really had a uh, even though they come out from prison, they continue to be under constant watch, under constant surveillance uh, by the Chinese um, authorities. So most of the f former political prisoners, they suffered a prolonged illness and they have a series of health complications uh, because of the injuries they sustained while in prison. So many political prisoners die soon after releasing from a prison or they die at a very young age uh, because of not being able to get the medical attention on time and then many of died because of relapse, relapsing from the older health condition. And um, f f it's not only the health condition also. When the political prisoners, they come out of prison, uh, they uh, even uh, they had a problem in integrating with the um, t larger Tibetan communities because the kind the policy that the Chinese government put for the political prisoner is that they uh, ostracized. They just tried to uh, try to stop them from keeping contact with all different communities. And so it's not possible for political prisoners to get job. And if some kind people, they offered a job, kind of security guard, kind of working in the hotel. But it's not only the political prisoner, also one who has given the job to the political prisoner were put also under rigs. So the situation of former political prisoners is like more or less like a homeless. They do not have a, a community or they do not, they cannot keep with, uh, keep contact with friends. And then the monks and nuns, political prisoners, they were not allowed to go back to uh, their monasteries and nunneries. <coughs> 
and and uh, the situation of former political prisoner is uh, very uh, green. And uh, so those who uh, need a medical attention, they cannot go to hospital because they cannot afford the financial uh, support for, uh, for, going the medical uh, for going the medical treatment. And so this is the situation that during uh, when I was in Tibet, and now we can easily, we can imagine that the situation is becoming severe now. And uh, just leave the numbers of political prisoners inside Tibet. We cannot count, we cannot say how many pris prisons are there in Tibet right now. Every corner there is a detention, every corner there is a prison. So we do not know the numbers of prison in Tibet. So even a family member disappeared when a member of a family was forcefully taken away from home and the family member, they cannot identify where he or she was put in. So that... So that's the situation inside Tibet and so that's what, what is happening inside Tibet. So thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Pinzong uh, for sharing the heart-wrenching story of the torture that you suffered. Uh, and not only that, but showing courage and bravery uh, while suffering that torture and not losing hope. One of the songs that she mentioned, uh, sung by the singing nuns, uh, goes something like this. We've sung a song of sadness We've sung a song of sadness. We've sung it from the Drapchip prison. Like the happy and joyful snow mountains, we've sung this song for the sake of freedom. Previously, a spirit, spiritual realm of dharma now is changed to a barbaric prison ground. Even at the cost of our lives, we Tibetans will never lose our courage. Thank you so much, Pinsulam. I would request the President of Central Tibetan Administration, Honorable Sikyong, Dr. Lopsan Sangila, to please hand over a memento um, to Pinzong Yudunla. And I request the audience to please stand up and give her an applause and to all the political prisoners who are suffering inside Tibet and China. I say this and I think everyone will agree that we are sincerely very, very sorry that you had to suffer this, but <clears throat> we will ensure that we, as long as are alive, will work and see that we are able to go back to Tibet and 
live in freedom. Thank you so much. Before we discuss, please take your seat. I just have one small uh, announcement. Uh, before we disperse, uh, our lunch break will start immediately. And after that, we have a visit to the Tibet Museum Photo Exhibition, which is being conducted in front of the UN building uh, near the broken chair. Uh, so please do visit. You will be able to see the history of Tibet and also some of the uh, documents, some of the narrations of uh, political prisoners like herself. Um, thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience and uh, for joining us in respecting the political prisoners. Thank you.